So Globy, today we're gonna talk about camping, but not the kind of camping you're thinking about. We're gonna talk about camping on the moon. What are some of the things you take when you go camping? A tent, water, food, extra clothing? And what do you do if you wanna explore the wilderness around you? That's right, you just climb out your tent and go exploring. With your parents' permission, of course. But what do astronauts take when they wanna go camping on the moon? And what do they do when they wanna go exploring? In addition to food, water, and clothing, they also have to bring their own air. And when they go exploring, well, let's just say it's a real challenge to drive across the rocky and dusty surface of the moon. For the last few years, NASA has been busy developing new vehicles for astronauts to use when they return to the moon. One of those vehicles is called the Lunar Electric Rover. The rover is an incredible vehicle. Normally it holds two astronauts, but it can hold as many as four in an emergency situation and it can drive across the moon at 10 kilometers per hour. That's around six miles per hour. The original Apollo astronauts, those are the astronauts who first went to the moon almost 40 years ago, could only travel about 10 kilometers from their lunar craft. But NASA's new lunar electric rover will allow astronauts to travel up to 240 kilometers away. That's about 150 miles. And the wheels on the rover are really cool. They can pivot, or turn, 360 degrees. That's an entire circle. And that means the rover can drive in any direction. The astronauts can also change the tools attached to the rover, depending on the type of tool the astronauts need to do their work. But the most important thing the rover will do is provide a safe, protective environment for the astronauts inside. There will be oxygen inside the rover for the astronauts to breathe and the hard shell of the rover protects the astronauts from solar particle events, or SPEs. SPEs are a special kind of radiation. They are made up of tiny particles that erupt from solar flares and can be extremely harmful to our astronauts. But the rover's shell protects them, and the astronauts can stay inside the rover for up to 72 hours. That's three days. But here's something else the rover's environment will provide that you may not be thinking about. Pressure. Today we're going to be talking to our friend, Dr. Richard Biles at the Virginia Air and Space Center to learn a little bit more about pressure. Hey, Dr. Biles. Hi, Evan. How are you doing today? So, Dr. Biles, can you tell us about the concept of pressure and why it's so important for the lunar electric rover? Well, if you know the moon, it doesn't have any air. And since it doesn't have any air, then there's no air pressure. Here at sea level, we get 14.7 pounds of pressure pressing in on every square inch of our body. That's from the air pressure. That's just from the mass of air that's above us. And it's all pushing down on us, but we're used to that. So we've got insides that are pushing out at 14.7 pounds, and we're in equilibrium there at our skin level. Now the problem is, when you go into space, you don't have that air. So there's nothing pushing in. Since there's nothing pushing in, if you went into space without a spacesuit, what would happen? That's right, you would swell up because the stuff inside will push out at 14.7 pounds of pressure. And we don't want that to happen because swelling up could be painful and even result in death and injury. So what I think we ought to do is try a little experiment just to show you what happens in space where there is no air pressure. And I have a bell jar here and a bell jar is a thing I can make a vacuum in. I have a vacuum pump on the floor, and I have gotten a small representative of the astronaut core. So now we're going to turn on the vacuum pump and remove the air from the bell jar. Now watch what happens to the marshmallow. As the air is removed, the marshmallow swells up just like we would in space without our pressurized rover or our spacesuits. So this is why we wear spacesuits in space and have pressurized rovers designed so that we can drive around on the moon. Dr. Biles, I hear that another cool concept about the rover is that the spacesuits the astronauts wear when they're moving around outside their spacecraft are actually kept on the outside of the rover. Why do they do that? When you're inside a pressurized container and you're not in that spacesuit, your body's not working as hard and you can do fine things like you can work a microscope and you can, you can go much, much further from the base, uh, that would be your base on the moon, you can go much, much further than you can just in a spacesuit. The moon dust, because there's no erosion on the moon, because there's no atmosphere, 
The moon dust is very, very sharp. It's like little tiny pieces of glass, and it actually works its way into the spacesuit, and it gets everywhere. Well, you don't want that where you've got your computers and your lab equipment and things like that, so that's a good, another good reason for having the uh, spacesuits attached to the outside. By having the spacesuits on the outside of the rover, it means the astronauts can wear normal clothing inside. This is very important because many of the experiments and research that they will need to do requires that the astronauts can move around easily, and flexibility is something that the bulky spacesuits prevent. Wow, Globy, with the new Lunar Electric Rover, our astronauts will be able to travel farther across the moon's surface than ever before, and that'll help them learn more, too, as they get to explore more and more areas. It's an incredible invention, and I bet NASA astronauts can't wait to try it out.